Now, what I'm going to do is grab, okay, just control copy there, just grab this and put it in here, okay, maybe not, let's just go and grab maybe this one here, okay, it's a little bit smaller, control copy in there, all right, let's do that, just to show you, okay, just a few tips in here, okay, Sometimes you get empty cells. Now in here we don't have any empty cells, but say you do get empty cells. Now if you want to show a value for a empty cell, you gotta click in your pivot table, go to options and options. And in here, layout and format, you can see for empty cells, show. You can put in there a zero, okay? So instead of being empty, you can put in there a zero, okay? Now, another thing is that Say you you know you make this a little bit bigger, okay? Make it pretty, and then you right click and you refresh. It moves it back in. It's annoying, isn't it? Well, I hate that. So again, options and options, and auto fit column width on update. We don't want that. We don't want it to auto fit. We want to keep it the way it is. So say you want to make it bigger and pretty, and just keep it like that. And right click and say you refresh your data. It keeps it like that. So that's a cool tip. Another thing is, okay, say that someone else has been updating your data source, okay? You go all the way down here and they just keep on updating it. And then you open this workbook and then you you don't know that someone else has gone in there and updated the information. And, and that new information is not being reflected, okay? Because it hasn't been refreshed because you didn't put it in there, someone else did. How are you going to know? So an, a good tip to know is, you can actually, every time you open your workbook, the pivot tables can refresh automatically. Okay, so you don't have to go in there and refresh all the time. So I'll show you how to do this. Again, options and options. Options and options and data. And the third option here is refresh data when opening the file. Click that. So the next time you open your, your file, okay, you get a little message here, that's fine. The next time you open your file, your pivot table will be refreshed. That's one less thing that you need to do. Okay, in here, what's due next month? Okay, so what we're gonna do now is, let's put in there uh, another pivot table. Let's go into our grouping, our date filter here. Let's go to select and type pivot table. Okay, and let's just put it in here. Just make it a little bit bigger, maybe not that big. Okay. All right, here we are. So we have our dates in here, and let's just right click and just, we can ungroup for now, okay. Now, I wanna see what's due next month. So from the drop down box, you get the date filters. You can actually see here, next month, this month, last month, it lists next quarter or next year. So let's go to next month, okay? So it gives you here the dates that pertain to next month. And say, for example, these were invoices, accounts payable that you had to pay. You'll actually know what amount you need to pay next month, okay? Now, when you come in next month and you open this table, it automatically refreshes for the following month. So you don't need to change anything. And you have an array of different options there. Okay, so you can go through that as well. Now, another tip here, okay, is top 10 orders. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to grab this just quickly. Um, you know, let's just put it in, in there. Okay, so now click in there, right click, show field list. So instead of order day, let's put in there our, okay, let's put in our channel partners, okay? And we have our sales there. So channel partners and sales. And let's go, instead of top 10 orders, we can say our top 10 salespeople, okay? Or sorry, channel partners. From in here, we can go to value filters, and because it knows that we have values in there, okay, not dates, it will give us the value filters, Top 10, okay. So top 10 in here, we can do top or bottom. We can do 5, 10 or 100, let's choose 10. And then here, let's just choose the item for now, okay? And just leave it as is and press okay. So it gives us our top 10. 
we can actually right click in there and sort from largest to smallest okay so we have the, the top channel partner uh, in the first row and then the tenth down there okay so it gives us that it's fantastic top 10 another thing is you can go to conditional formatting so conditional format and let's make a data bar here which is new in excel 2010 and let's make it you know let's choose that so once, once we choose that we can actually have to select the third option so the third option means it's going to conditional format all the values except the totals or subtotals okay so you can see that we have the green being on top and the red being on the bottom but we can actually go in there and just change that around we can actually put the red on top okay and then the green on the bottom okay so you can actually apply conditional formatting and i've got a whole chapter on my extreme pivot table course on conditional formatting with pivot tables now final tip one that i love and one that you're gonna get lots of benefit from okay let's put in a new pivot table okay by now you'll know this off by heart okay so we're gonna put in our sales person in here and then we're gonna put in sorry the sales person in the report filter one second let's just move this okay one second again okay that's fine the reason why that happened is because the report filter is going to go on to my it's going to go on to my text here so what it says is do you want to replace the contents of the destination cells that's fine let's just say yes okay you see that it's got rid of it okay let's put in the month okay and let's put in the sales in here okay okay let's put in like that all right so and let's put in the year in there all right so we have our sales per month and also per year for each salesperson and say we have look we have four salespeople in here okay and you know you create this cool looking report and you know you make you can even put different metrics if you like now say you want to copy what you've done here this pivot table here with your special metrics your special conditional format say you want to copy that for each different salesperson well you can do that okay easy go to options and the options are drop down and then choose show report filter pages so the report filter is here okay so the salesperson so show the report filter pages click on that and it gives you an option it gives you the option of whatever field list is in the report filter at the moment we just have one so we're just going to choose that when i press ok have a look down here what's going to happen all the names are going to be created as a separate sheet with the separate values boom okay let's go here have a look there look at that we have homer simpson in right john mccludus and michael jackson as the own sheet with their own metrics so that's fantastic so you can take that you can copy paste or you can print that and you can save that page as well and you can give that to your boss instead of going one by one and doing that this is a quick and easy way it's a great tip and one that you should definitely use okay so that has been briefly the pivot table webinar now i've showed you the most important features but there's lots more there's lots more that you can do with this pivot table and i want to show you now is just go on to my course and, I, and I, i'll show you the different parts that are within a pivot table